Hey, welcome to the Innovation Podcast, powered by the Jim Moran College of Entrepreneurship. I am Mark McNeese, your host and a faculty member of the Jim Moran College. I can't believe it. We've been going for five seasons now, and I'm really stoked. We're going to start a new session or a segment that I've been wanting to do called Meet the Faculty. And we have one of my favorite faculty members who is going to premiere this new segment with me, Mr. John Breed. Hey, John, thanks for coming in, and how you been doing? Dude, I am doing well, and I am super stoked. I'm the pioneer of faculty faculty profiles it's like the, the <laughs> absolutely meet the faculty meet the faculty. not faculty profiles but whatever yes, meet the faculty because if we're profiling <laughs> me it's going to be difficult all right oh, no dear. we're good <laughs> how's your semester going the semester's been great the fall semester is always fun because we we got football like great weather on campus and i do a lot of classes around the students who have to do startups and they're under the gun to, to present their startups at the Market Expo in two weeks. So there's urgency. Nice. Tell us a little bit about the Expo. Yeah. So the Expo is really a tradition that started before we were a college, when we were inside the College of Business as a, a program that did entrepreneurship strategy and management information systems. Uh, so it's pushing 10 years now, 10 years now. And... Uh, it really started as this way of a course around, hey, you've got to build a startup and we'll do a little bit of super micro funding. And then the whole course is around ideation all the way out to trying to sell something to somebody. As I like to say, someone that's not your parents or your grandparents, yeah. like a stranger. And that expo gets done right out on land of screen in front of the main library. And you, know, you throw up a bunch of tents and students show off the stuff that they've been building and they sell stuff. And it's probably one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that we do in the college. Like, it's, a, it's a really great way to take the learnings and all that's going on inside the college and really push it all the way out to the university. And we've had all, all kinds of people just sort of randomly show up and buy stuff. It's fun. No, that is fun. I always really enjoy it, and I enjoy the different food trucks that you have out there. And I know one of our startups, Campus Waffle, have you worked with them? <laughs> yeah. So he was just on the... He was just on the podcast. Yeah. And yeah, it's interesting. I didn't realize he just started like a month and a half ago. So that was pretty interesting. Well, I find a lot of times, especially if they're in the experiences, if this happens to be a prospective student or someone who's uh, gotten into the Jim Rand College and they're going to sort of get inside the curriculum. So on the commercial side, they'll end up in experiences, right? And I find that the closer we get to Expo, it's amazing how fast we pivot, like 17 ideas, and all of a sudden, two weeks before, it's like, this is the thing I'm doing. I'm building waffles. And you're like, great. <laughs> like, yeah, so. Hey, everybody loves waffles. Who doesn't love a waffle? No, no, yeah. I learned so much about waffles. I was told that that was why we're doing uh, the faculty spotlight. Is it spotlight profile? What are we doing? Uh, meet the faculty. Meet the faculty. I heard right. there was going to be waffles. <laughs> That's a, well. I, I had Michael in here, who's the waffle guy, and Where's he didn't Michael? bring any waffles. What the? <laughs> so right. I'm like, dude, you're a rookie. <laughs> so no, I think that's super cool. Like that, I, don't you think that one of, the, one of the cooler things in our program is just these kind of roll through and they have ideas and they try to execute on them, and then oftentimes they do. Sometimes they fail massively, which is also you know, no, it's a part learning of the experience. learning. It's yeah. part of the learning. I I love the expo. I I. I really go, I love going and visiting. It's always surprising to me, like how excited the students are to show me like what they've been working on and, yeah. and things like that. So there's a, like a great energy there. That's one thing I think about the Jim Moran College, and I so wish there was something like this when I was in college with all the comp pitch competitions, the micro grant, the innovation challenge, the expo. Sure experiences all of, all of these things it's it's just a such a great place for people who think they may want to start a company and the most students aren't going to launch the company for the rest of their life that they're working on they learn all the skills right that, that all the startup skills and then they can apply it to whatever startup that they actually end up doing. No, I, I, I think you, you nailed it perfectly. So the way I would articulate it in, in that class where we're literally trying to build a business, right. And have them build a business is what we're ultimately trying to do is not 
not the business or the, the startup of their dreams forever, and this is what they're going to do for the rest of their life. If that happens, awesome. As I like to say, one of these days I'm going to teach a billionaire in that class, and they're going to end up being a billionaire. And then all I ask for them is, you know, they don't need to at me. You know, they don't, like, put me on, on, on IG or any of that. But if they have a jet, the, I need a ride on that jet. All right. right? right like, just give me a little ride on the jet. All, all old JB needs, right? And that'll be the thanks for me. But uh, getting to, to the point, I think what's interesting in that class is the objective is not to build the business of their dreams. I think the objective is to give them the tools, right? So as that student progresses through the university and then potentially out in their career, when they recognize that opportunity, you know, what are the things that they sort of do to execute on that opportunity? You know, sort of the, you know, I like to say arrows in the quiver. You know, you've got these things, the business model canvas, the way to validate with customers, the uh, pressure test that business model and that value prop and the way to put a pitch deck together to go get that chief technology officer, co-founder, or go raise money, like they'll have those kind of skill sets to apply to that new opportunity that is likely, I'll be contra- like is a little bit of a hot take, but not much if you're on the faculty side. It's very likely to happen, you know, four, five, six, ten years out from the university, right? Mm-hmm. And they've got that how to go back and go, hey, I see X this is a problem. This, there's friction here. There's an opportunity to turn in a, a solution. How do I approach? And, and if you haven't been educated in entrepreneurship, which I think, you, you know, and I think a lot of our faculty, self-made entrepreneurs, right? We, we did a lot of things probably the wrong way, not how we would teach a student today. Yeah. And, and I think the objective is to give them the tool set so that they mitigate it and they have the things to go, I'm super excited about this idea, but let's Let's sit down first and figure out what are the resources I got to put together. Let's validate that with early users, all that kind of stuff. That's really what that class is about. And frankly, I think that's the larger picture for, for, for our college is to give them those tools and mindsets of how to approach an opportunity. Is that, is that how you think about it? Yeah, it's I mean, totally. Heck, I'm just I mean, like going I, off. I'm just, I love practical learning. Yeah, I, I think that so much learning happens by just trying to do it and falling on your face or, or doing it and then coming back. And, yeah. and I agree. Well, you know, if I could do it again, this is what I do. And it's like, hey, Sorry, I'm going to take the glass off because you're not going to make me re- – like, no. there's no cue cards, obviously, because you can tell about what I've been saying that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> just kidding. Gotcha. Say this. Yeah, say uh, Yeah, it – no, I totally lost my train of thought. I'm but sorry. Anyway, I, threw they, 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 I threw you off. I threw you off. No, I, I think it's about giving them uh, experiential learning and the having to do as opposed to being caught on just quizzes and PowerPoint yeah. slides. And and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'll, I'll stop short of saying there's nothing wrong with that approach to teaching. But I th- I'm with you. I think what we do from a Jim Moran perspective is that we do a great job of forcing them forcing, putting students in a situation where they actually have to do as opposed to regurgitate, right? Is mm-hmm. that what you were, is that, maybe that's where you were heading. Yeah, it's, that I was headed in. And I think there's so much power in pushing somebody out of their comfort zone and they do something and then realize, well, I'm still alive. Like, I, yeah. it wasn't that bad. And actually, I, I had a little bit of success and fun at it. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times so that true. when... You tell a student like, hey, in this semester, in the next 16 weeks, you're going to identify a problem and you're going to ideate and, and come up with a, a viable business plan and launch. And then, hey, guess what? You're going to present it at the expo. They're probably a little bit freaked out. Yeah, I, th- I, I think they are. And I think that you sort of nailed a couple of points there that that I think are beneficial. So I'm, I'm now speaking in my head to a parent or um, a key stakeholder in a student's life, right? That little bit of uncomfortableness, that edge of like having to go from, hey, in a very short period of time, which in the life of a real business, you know, 16 weeks is not a lot of time, to go from you got to pick, validate it, and ultimately you're trying to get to an episode to sort of show off a product or a service that's ready to be purchased or at least an MVP ish sort of thing. Yeah. I, I can see minimal that. viable pro- product MVP. Whoa. Look at you. Oh no. I'm just, just, like I, I, I just, I, 
No, you're right. You're right. I know right. our we listeners should... don't all know. What no, no, no. You're, is. you're spot on. I was. Okay. Um, no, that that that's I care smart. about people, John. You do, and that's what <laughs> makes you so. So, um, no, I think, I think that is a little nerve wracking. I also think that level of urgency is helpful because I find that you kind of got to raise the stakes a little bit to. You know, so that you feel, I like to say, like, if I don't feel, a, a, heck, I'm, I'm in front of a mic right now, and there's a little edge to me wanting to be, you know, sound smart and actually add value to a listener and do it in a way that's, that's impactful. And so, therefore, I have a slight bit of nerves, right, because there's a mic and there's a camera and there's lights. And I like to think that when I feel that little edge of urgency or nervousness or whatever, that, that actually shows I sort of care about the outcome. Right. Yeah. And if we can do that in a classroom setting around building, building something, there's a lot of value in that. And, but the reality is that you and I know that the stakes are actually pretty low, right? Like you're mitigating. Right. Yeah. The, does that make sense? The, and that's one thing that I really love about that class and, and a lot of other things that we do at, at yeah. Jim Moran is, Hey, you know what? The worst thing that's going to happen is, well, actually nothing. It, it, yeah. So yeah. it's actually when I used to, t- uh, the class you developed, go to market strategies. Fantastic course. <laughs> it, it was so organized. Great it, was. Yeah. it was amazing. One thing that I added to, um, it didn't need that, much. It didn't. Uh, and I got this from inside, somewhere. Inside it, it, <laughs> um, I, I started the class the that we did. We did a, a assignment called 20 minutes to fail. And, and I'm like, leave your stuff here. I'm going to stay here. Go and don't come back until you fail. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, go ask people for stuff and don't come back until you get a no. Someone says no. Until somebody gets no and says no. So they would go out and they're like, this is stupid. I get, you know, immediately. And literally people came back right in. And then we, then we like talk about it and, and we go through and they're, and people are asking like for crazy stuff. Like this one person asked, somebody was coming through driving through and he's like somebody doesn't know he stops him goes hey can i jump in can you give me a ride across campus and they're like sure and he's like oh actually i don't need to to and and and, uh i uh, saw somebody on the phone and he stops him guys literally on the phone and says hey i know you're on a call but i need to make a call can i use your phone and the guy said sure and then you know obviously eventually they get no's and everything and they come back and and i'm like okay what did we learn like well one, they're all like shocked how much people want to say yes to crazy stuff. Right. And then the other thing that they're, they're shocked about is how hard it was to say no. And then finally, um, so what happened when you got a no? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what happened? And they're like, nothing. Yeah. I'm like, there you go. Yeah. That, there's yeah. your first lesson in go-to-market strategy. Well, if you don't ask, you don't, you know, you can't get the, you, you, it's automatically a no. Yeah. Uh, no, um, and um, it's great. I, I'm a big fan of program, right? And I know that sounds like a default for any faculty member. Maybe it is, but I, I, I think you and I share that. I think a lot of our faculty do. It's a unique place. Like, it's a unique place. Mm-hmm. Like, in every place, it's a system, and there's a process, and you're in a larger university and all of that, and there's rules, and there's stuff, right? It's it's work. It's still work, and there's, there's challenges. It's unique. At, that it's a place where I feel like we're actually all in. Um, what I find that's fun is we expect students to create. And then from a faculty perspective, we're excited to sort of self-evaluate the class and figure out, is it current? Do we need to adjust this? Do we need to do that? And it always feels like we're up for the next sort of cool thing to see how a business model works or let's try it out. And we sort of take, we de right? Like, and... If I were a student, if I were uh, shit, and I, am I, um, you can say it. I have to edit it. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna edit it out. Shoot. So shoot. If I was now 17, you're making a lot more editing. Just keep <laughs> on going. I love edit. <laughs> uh, well, I I think if I oftentimes look at the program, if they're walking, if a student is walking in my class, like you know, coming in and she's got ideas about entrepreneurship, and she's passionate. And, you know, he or she's got a really interesting sort of take on something they want to solve, a problem they want to solve. And that didn't, ex- 
or it, I was unaware of that existing when I was their age. And I just kind of got roped into doing a business degree, right? And it's like mm-hmm. a functional area about a right. business. Hey, get man, because it yeah. sounded broad. Yeah. I and, mean, and I no, did marketing, and I'm like, yeah, and no marketing. knock on the college of business, oh, no, it's right? Great. Like college of business is great. I have a day. I've done, you know, we, yeah. we've all done that, kind of, and it's it's super interesting. What makes the Jim Ran college special to me is that you. You really actually are focused on startups. You can kind of screw it up and who cares, right? Like it's okay, but we want you to do, and we want you to try and get out in front of people and not be in the four walls. And if you're not watching, I'm drawing four walls, but the four walls of the university, like the the faster you step out and just talk to people and try to pitch an idea and see if it's valuable and validate, man, that's powerful stuff. And that's a unique or I believe that to be a very unique part of the experience. It's, it's sort of why you teach. Like, and mm-hmm. I think most of our faculty, and I'll just go ahead and, sit and you know, you can edit it out, Mark, if you want to, but I'm not, you know, I think it's uh, the wrong thing to do. I think a lot of faculty are, are different than maybe other academia in the sense that a lot of us can just walk out and go do something different yeah. and, and, and probably make a good living doing it and be happy doing it. But I think what makes us a little bit unique as an ecosystem is the Jim Brown College sort of sets it up that, that we get to experiment too. And, and we sort of enjoy that chance to sort of impact and, and with like entrepreneurship and, and almost the same way that they, the students do. No, is that an advertising speak? Did I, I I nailed that. that You did. You totally nailed that. And you could, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it'll get you anything, but (laughs) it will get me nothing, but who cares? No, this is a cool gig. It is. It is a very cool gig. And that's one of the things that I love about our college faculty is I don't, I don't want to say all of them are practitioners, but the vast majority of them have, have run a business or start business. It's, it's not just theory for them. Well, Okay, so I feel like you almost threw us off. Do you, you've you've heard me go on the spiel, so I'm going to go on the spiel because it's the podcast, and I don't know who's going to listen to it. And if they'll probably listen to you, and then they hear that I'm on there, and they're like, "Let's just cut off." But um, and the students love you. Oh, that's super sweet. Um, I'll, <laughs> um, so my 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 sort of take on that is that what makes us real is kind of Venn diagram it out, right? Like if you were gonna if you're gonna build the idea. Uh, college education, and this is, by the way, not fact, not peer-reviewed. I didn't write this up into some great whatever. This is just how my head thinks mm-hmm. about entrepreneurship. That it ought to be, there, there ought to be some rigor, some act rigor, you know, as one circle. And then think about the other circle if you're thinking Venn diagram. Okay, and this is where Dr. McNeese should explain what a Venn diagram is, but just go look it up. Jeez, just Google it. All right. And so a circle is, is really academic rigor. And then sort of a circle is, is high-end research about um, the topics associated with the college. And then a third, if we did it right, ought to be practitioners, people who actually do that kind of work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you can kind of put all three, lay all three of those circles together, if you know what a Venn diagram is, and that sort of center where a student gets access to practitioners, access to some real academic rigor around these subject matters, and then some access to, to, to some research along the way. To me, that's an ideal education, and I agree with you, and I don't, or, you know, I don't know. Are they going to storm the doors, the rest of the university, when we just call? Like, that's what makes our college better, because we're actually practitioners, too. A good, a good portion of us mixed, and we get along great with the folks who do, not, and, and bless those people, too, right, because they make us smarter. Or, you know, the, the people who are, which... Um, who have a lot of academic rigor. Um, I just can't imagine as a student, that's not the most fun, like as a, and, and impactful. So that practitioner piece, I think that's a long winded way, professor way of saying, I agree with you. The practitioner piece is, is unique and uh, to the, to the student in my view. Yeah. 100%. The, Are you editing that down? Cause I talked for like 17 minutes. <laughs> I am not editing anything <laughs> down. No, <laughs> But, hey, I, you're on the – they hear me speak all the time. You're on the podcast because we want to hear what you think. Aww. And we want to meet you, John Breed. Sweet. They already know me. So, that's I, good. That's if good. they've listened to the podcast. I've so. known you for a few years. You have known yeah. me for a few years. And so what 
what are some of the challenges do you feel that there are to to teaching entrepreneurship? Oh man, I think the I think there's a couple of challenges and and some things that are um and I I actually think that this is uh, I use this I kind of go down this story of like it's super easy for people to go you can't teach entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are born, not made. You know, this is almost the nature versus nurture sort of argument if you want to do a bit of an essence. Um I'll, I'll just go ahead and take my hot take and that's since I don't want you to edit more, I'll go bull crap. I just don't buy that. Um, I think in the end, it can absolutely be taught. I think there's value in teaching it. If nothing else, some of the stuff we talked about earlier in terms of managing your emotions around something you get really passionate about, tools to sort of um, opportunities are super crucial. But the reality is I think there's a challenge and a perception by a student or a parent going, listen, you can just be an entrepreneur. Why would you major in entrepreneurship? And I would argue that it wasn't that long ago that management inside business, and that's something I was educated in, that people would be like, you're going to major in management? What, what, what is that degree in? Mm-hmm. Telling people what to do? Like, no, no, there's legitimate, there's legitimate ideas and methodologies to get more productivity out of folks and retain them, as is there's legitimate tools and methodologies in terms of how to be more successful as an entrepreneur how to de-risk situations, how to understand the market better, how to recognize opportunities better, how to execute on them better. Like, and that's the kind of challenge. So I would say in quick number one is like oftentimes just explain to people that entrepreneurship of a, of a university level education and degree, I would say that's challenge number one. Big, and, and, and so subset of one, so let's call it one B, will go, well, what if I don't have the best business out? Uh, with a degree, what can I do then? Like, I'm not employable unless I'm starting my own business. That's more BS, all right? So the argument is, like, no, you couldn't be more, like, you couldn't be more employable coming out of the entrepreneurship program because you had to deal with every functional area of a business, plus you actually had to go do something as opposed to being really good at doing quizzes or freaking regurgitating PowerPoint. Like, we, we drive to that. Yeah, I mean, you have so many artifacts that you've created. It's like, yeah. look, I've actually created a business plan. And what I try to tell the students, too. Do, like, we, yeah, let's, but, let's just take a step back. Do you spy into that? The, the part of the logic is explaining that it's a thing worthy of, of, of studying and majoring and kind of why. This, right? is, this is what I, and it just, it, it comes down to, arguably one of the best athletes ever to walk this planet, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. So Kelly Slater? I'm sorry, what? (laughs) Michael Jordan, like, if he, if the, like, um, he's, it was talking about, like, he was asked about, like, why he's so good and everything. And he said, I've had great coaches. And Mm -hmm. he's like, look, I got cut. I forget if it was his middle school team. No, I think it's 10th grade, dude. 10th grade. So he's like, I got cut from high school in basketball in the 10th grade. And granted, the guy's got a ton, world's ton of talent, right? right? Yeah. Uh, so he's got a ton of talent, but, but he's like, I've had great coaches. I can't see what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm doing it right. That's why I do it that way. And it's like, I get that positive, I get that feedback and everything. Great point, and great point. to me, are we all going to be Michael Jordan? Are we all going to be Elon Musk? Oh, but you know what? Any, any one yeah. of us yeah. could, be better at any discipline if we have great coaching. And is uh, I think that's a good point. Is, is we're coaches. We're coaches that have played the game. Yeah. And we've had various degrees of success, but we understand the fundamentals. And you know what? A, a great coach doesn't need to be a great player. In fact, a lot of great players are terrible coaches. Yeah. And, and, vice, and vice versa. So to me, like, when Michael Jordan was talking about that, it, and it, that just clicked with me no, about entrepreneurship, just saying like, yeah, we're we're coaches and we're coaching people who some of them are going to be great league players, you know, some are regional players or something like that. Some of these people are going to be able to take that coaching and take it to the global level. No, I, I actually think that um, one of the things I think that's cool in the entrepreneurship program, and honestly, this could happen in any. I know I hit the round, but. Um, you know, I think, I think as a great mentor, you know, instructor inside the program is to convince them, convince a student as they go through the program, 
man, they kind of get to define success, right? Their own mm-hmm. personal success. To your point of like rugby versus college versus, you know, if you use this sort of sporting analogy. Well, not everybody wants Elon Correct. Musk, you know. There's yeah. some people, you know, lifestyle entrepreneurship. They want to own a store and be with their family and yeah. stay, no, stay in I, the same I, city. And that's great and honorable and wonderful. Not listen, all of us it's, need it's, to be Steve Jobs or whatever. Yeah, and, and nor will, but that's okay. Um, so I... Let me circle back to the the initial question that got us down this rabbit hole, which I think is a bad one. One, I think uh, one of the challenges in entrepreneurship is first validating education makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. And there's real R and 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 importantly that it's in to sort of pursue. Um, I think that's a pretty big challenge, and sometimes you have to the student of like, happens after this, and mm-hmm. and do they because you know, at the baseline, they're trying to be educated to hopefully be economically self-sustaining and design a life that, uh, you know, a professional life that, that that's impactful, right? And I think that that is something that in college as well. Um, so that's a challenge. And then I would argue um, as it gets into the teaching. And I think that that's about once you have a student who's in the program, oftentimes, are you telling me to do that? Or no, I'm just stretching my okay. back. I'm always like, when, is, that, is that an indicator? I should sit more straight like because I have a tendency to hunch. Uh, so anyway, I think the second great challenge is trying to convince students that the risks are low and this is the time. Like you're in this, you're in this, like we're sitting in a, in a, in a really kind of cool studio with this, um, you know, kind of working through something and we're on, we're in her, you know, research university in america a top 20 ish whatever it is top 25 i don't know what we are but a one of the better public universities in the country in this with ecosystem an undefeated football team with an undefeated football team with forty thousand plus students and then you had faculty and let's just call it i don't know i'm gonna make some numbers up so don't fact me and everybody get all like send you mean notes about <laughs> idiot john is but let's just call it 55, 60,000 people. those notes. Please send those <laughs> <You> notes. <do. laughs> yes. But there's 60,000, let's just call it 55, 60,000 people, uh, all in an atmosphere where you're learning and there's just an incredible ecosystem around it. Uh, my point is that when you're here, you get this opportunity to learn things that are transferable. You can define your success. You can figure out that you do well. Um, to your point, we don't all want to be Oprah Winfrey, as media you know, conglomerate. We don't have to be a Sarah Blakely and do her thing. We don't have to be Elon Musk and do that thing. That Those aren't necessary. I'll be honest. Hell, they're not my goals, right? Let mm-hmm. me accept the jet part just All to right. kind of keep a common theme here. But the reality is that that's not my goal. And it doesn't have to be your goal. And I think teaching entrepreneurship, the struggle is teaching students that they can take on the risk. To your point, going back to your go-to-market strategy and mm-hmm. – Failure, no, is not that bad. I, I, I'll pull that one back. Totally editable. Uh, <laughs> editable. Um, so a hard no is, like, so much better than a maybe. That's pretty good. Right. Like, this is a pretty good product. I'm, I might buy that. Like, I'd rather have, like, a, a like it's such a better thing to hear the hard no. Like, no. Like, your value prop around your special new pizza dish is awful, and I'm not buying it, right? Like, that feedback better, and the risk of, the, of of that is low if you can sort of validate, if you follow my logic, and hearing some of that. So, I would argue that if one's you know making sure people understand the education is worth has real ROI. Uh, two is I think getting people out to do the experience side because everybody likes it. It's way easier to sit back if you're holding a phone and sort of you know do things digitally and not interact with the world like the physical world. It's that, um, and then. Uh, I think that's that's a big part of what we try to do is to get, you know, to your point, get out and hear the no, get out and pitch to people, yeah. act, and and build your network and try some things out and let it, that's getting getting a student out of this seat and out doing the work and then sharing the work and not thinking they need an NDA or it's got to be perfect before right. I share it with the world screw that man like let's get that out and let's start validating and trying that's probably the hardest teaching thing at least for me i don't know what's your hardest like you asked me the question i'm curious what you think uh we just flipped the script here yeah now 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 you're the the, you're now you're running the podcast that's really easy for me i believe 
You're going to be that more is, succinct in this answer, aren't you? I'm I just going to answer. I went 72 minutes on two I've, points. I feel so many of our students feel like they have to come up with the right answer. And That's to awful, me, man. That breaking awful. that mindset is, it, this is not a true-false test. Life is not a true-false test. Yeah. And there's no right answer. There's answers that get you farther down the path faster than maybe other answers. And to me, I think so many students be cool and it's like, well, I want to get good the grades grade. and I want to, yeah. I want, I want to write. And it's like, well, in entrepreneurship, no one knows the right answer. The right answer is you fall on your face and you get up and you try something, a, a new approach and keep going. Yeah, I might even, because you're smarter than I am, because that was a really good answer. I, 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 I know I'm making light of it because you just know my personality. But um, thoughtful answer, and, and I agree with you. I think I would almost simplify it to dumb JB terms is we kind of want you to do it. Man. I don't want you sit, sitting back, and that's me kind of leaning back, but you kind of want to do and doing is better than not doing. I, I like to think I, I usually show something on the whiteboard at some point in the semester, oftentimes very early. That thing said is kind of like you know, greater than, less than sign. Like, and you put today on one side and tomorrow on the other. And I, tomorrow is greater than to an entrepreneurial mindset. It's like, I think I can go figure out the things that are more valuable to, um, you know, the, the market I want to serve that we can knock down friction, we can knock down the obstacle, we can create real value that people care about. So I just got to know how to sort of attack this thing. And then not, okay, so, you know, that, take that analogy out and tomorrow's better and then you go pitch and it goes to hell in a handbasket, as we would say in the South. That's okay, because the next day, we can just, just reiterate, you know, let's, let's tweak it and try it again. Like it's, that's the mentality. Right? And I don't know that gets taught in everywhere else in, in, a, in an academic setting. So I want to leave us with this. Uh, it? We got, let's talk like fun stuff. Like, let's, <laughs> what's your favorite color? I don't know I don't what know my what favorite it, color is. It, both of our favorite color is blue. Come on, we know that. That's true. Yeah, well, That's We true. both wear blue a lot. Um, so there's this kind of trend going on in college, which I think is really, really cool. And I'm sure students have come up with you with, they have these little notebooks. I hope so, because if you're about to tell me something I don't know about, well, they have these and then I don't note- know the trendy stuff. And, they, um, they have these little notebooks, and they're all like, write down some of your biggest, like, life lessons and, like, any mm-hmm. axioms or sayings that you say to yourself, but write it to me. Like, write your name, and there's almost like a yearbook thing, right? But That's kind of cool. Uh, so I had a, I did a, I've done it a couple times this semester, and I just did one right before this podcast. And you're like, okay, this is, you know, whatever, like things that have helped me mm-hmm. in life. And the real thing is like, at least our students are really interested in getting kind of like, what are the things, the sayings that kind of get times? So I'll get here. Okay. Um, if uh, you could go back and tell... 20 year old John Breed something. What would you tell 20 year old John Breed something? Okay, that's option one. That's option one. Yeah. And it can't be don't take Mark's calls. <laughs> and option two would be is there, is there an axiom or a saying or some sort of motto in your life when just life is tough, right? And you're just like, you know what? You, you just say this to yourself, positive self-talk. Okay, because I'm, mm-hmm. and so that's, that's option A or B, mm-hmm. and I'm going to do C, all of the above. All right, cool. No, do all no, the above. It's all the above. It's your podcast. So, yeah, it is. Well, it's actually not even my podcast. It's, it's a college. college's podcast, but we're on all it. All right, so the dean's they, letting us go. They 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 letting me hit buttons. Yeah, they let <laughs> They let us in. Here. Um, that's on them, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's what it's not my fault. Uh, so no, I, I it's like, um, twenty-year-old uh, John, simple and easy. Um, worry a whole lot less about what people think about success and um, and and you know being able to try to impress people and um, and that I needed to be smarter and 
articulate and more polished and and need to be more refined um, i think uh i think not if i could go back and tell that guy uh, not to worry as much about that stuff and then just sort of hey yo um would have been good for me uh, and that's just me I, like you know I meet people all the time in the program that just have the incredible amount of self-confidence just to go. That was not me at 20. And I would worry way more about people around me. Now, the flip side is you can turn that into a little bit of a superpower in terms of being empathetic of people on the other side. But I would suggest that if I could tell me to go more more early, uh, that would have been, that would be what I would tell that person. Okay. So that was A. Okay. Uh, perfect. Okay, let's go Love B. It. Uh, so B weight is axiom and sort of the things summarize it this way, um, sort of the thing about myself when things are hard. Uh, so I'll give a caveat that hard a lot, man. I think, I think we, um, the better off we are as instructors, explaining to students that um, if you feel, um, you know, anxious about your success or kind of all those things that go into developing a life, and, they, and there's more, there's more tough days than good days, and that doesn't, don't mean that to be no, I just think that that's, that's sort of okay and tough to get to the good. Um, um, and you know, my, my, my backstory as an entrepreneur and it's not all pretty. No, I know. I really wanted to get there, but we yeah, were just talking we've about to... other stuff. So I could come, yeah, no, 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 no. It, it, well, it, it, it'd be it, like, what are they, the prequel or whatever? Like, yeah, like oh, the origin story of John. Brady. I love that. Well, I want that to do the origin um, story. I, I mean, I, I think what I like to, think and the stuff I tell myself today when things are tough or I'm worried about the next move or trying to make the next best decision or worried that I didn't do something well. I get nervous when I leave a classroom and don't think I added value. Like that actually irritates me and then I get kind of kick myself around a little bit or I'm worried about the risk or when just, just you should not edit out when shit just, just doesn't go, mm. it just doesn't always go well. Um, what I've learned is you can recover from anything. Like legitimately with real effort and real thought and a little bit of nation, um, listen, the, the worst of the worst is probably not as bad as you think. Yeah. You can remake yourself and sort of reposition yourself. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take that long to like, hey, I was doing this and this failed and I'm going to take the lessons from here and reposition myself as a subject matter expert and something completely different because of the lessons I learned here. That is not that hard to do. And it, in turn, what, what's harder is allowing yourself to think that, hey, this, this sucks, and I just kind of got beat here, and, and it didn't go the way I wanted to, and the outcomes are not awesome, and there's real ramifications for that. I'm not suggesting there's not real ramifications. But give yourself X period of time, and you can remake that whole story almost always. Like, it, you can do it, and, uh, and, and I've been fortunate – to do it, I've been unfortunate enough to live through the parts right. too, and I think it's super crucial. So, a and myself, like, dude, you can always you can always fix this. There's always time. Like, you can yeah. you're smart enough to recover, and you can be resilient. And that's about it. And you know, a is like just they're almost the same, really. It's like I don't care less about what everybody thinks. You and and and, and act action over inaction. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you for coming in. That was that was super super cool, and I wish we had more time. And, yeah. and I'm just going to have you back for the, the origin story. No, I'll I'll give you this. I'll end it. It's uh, it's actually um, I make jokes, but it, I appreciate you invite me in. And you know, if it's, I hope uh, it lands well with somebody somewhere oh, sooner and it impacts. Hundred percent well. Yeah, it's awesome, Mark. Thank you for bringing me in. Cool. What a thank fun you time for coming. Yeah, fun times. Hey, thank you for tuning in to the Innovation Podcast. Hey, if you like this episode, a favor and drop us a like, uh, a comment in the comment section, and obviously give it a share. And whatever platform you're listening to, be sure to hit that little subscribe button. Be sure that you will uh, be notified when we bring John back and we can hear and dig into his origin story about spider bit him or, or whatever. Whatever <laughs> spider happened. Spider monkey attacked hit, me. Hit, yeah. hit by gamma rays or whatever your origin well, story man, is. It was an alien. There was aliens involved. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Other planets. Yeah. Thank you all.